Eric, thank you. Well, the Federal Reserve making an historic cut to interest rates. They have been sky high for years in an effort to fight back against the surge in inflation. Now, for big purchases like cars or homes, there are already signs of relief. Uh, but what about everyday goods that the average American is still struggling to afford? Let's bring in Peter Earle, senior economist, economist at the American Institute for Economic Research. Uh, Peter, we'll walk through everything uh, so on this real world impact. We'll start here. And I ask you, what kind of interest rates can you now expect if you're looking to buy a home or if you're looking to refinance your existing mortgage? So in the short term, uh, some of the rates that Americans face, like credit card rates, auto loan payments, uh, mortgage rates, all that, uh, they're probably going to decrease by a little, but they were already at highs uh, not seen in years. And it takes a while for changes in credit. Those, those are the changes that take place when the Fed moves the interest rates to permeate through the economy. So right now, most of the relief being felt is going to be psychological. Uh, the big question is, did the cutting cycle come in time? You know, consumers are showing record low savings, prices are still rising, and there are indications of slowing manufacturing. So we have to see if or when those turn around. OK, yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's still soon. So we've got to wait for the fallout, if you will. And hopefully the fallout right. will be positive uh, across the board. But so let's just walk through this, though. And, and I'm not sure if you can really uh, answer this one, but I think this is a question that a lot of people may be uh, thinking, which is if you are reviewing your 401k, contemplating if you're going to retire, say, by the end of this year, or you might think, well, I'll just wait till the end of next year. How does this latest interest rate cut calculate? Well, I mean, there's more Fed cuts to come if the various, uh, uh, you know, forecasting uh, markets are correct. They say that there should be another 50 or 75 basis cut basis point cuts this year. You know, the stock market just hit yeah. new all time highs. Um, there's one thing I learned as a trader for many years, and that's the more expensive that stocks get, the less of a shock it takes to send them back down. Um, there are concerns about the future trajectory of stock prices that we saw in early August when the indices fell about 8 percent and the markets back up. So I can't and wouldn't try to pick. Uh, tops or bottoms, but I know it's cheap and I know it's expensive. And from a historical perspective, stocks are pretty expensive right now. Right, right. So if you could give me a simple answer, again, I, it's kind of unfair. It's not really, a, there's not a simple answer. But, you know, the people going, look, I think I may retire. I'll do it now. Maybe I'll wait till next year. What's the safest bet? The safest bet. I, I, I would say be careful, be cautious, that sort of thing. If, is, if, is that specific That's a enough? Fair answer. <laughs> That's a fair, you know what, it's a fair answer. We'll, we'll move on. Fair enough. But uh, okay. here's a, the question we, we, we teased in the beginning, and, and, and here it is. Will we see this interest rate cut at the grocery store? You know, the last CPI we report we had last week was the August CPI, and we actually saw core prices, which is prices of everyday goods and services, actually accelerating a little bit. So um, I think right now it's pretty clear that by the end of the year, we're not going to be at the Fed's uh, uh, inflation target, which is between two and two and a quarter percent. And uh, no, if I were to guess, I don't think we're going to see that relief anytime soon in the everyday uh, prices that people are spending money on. I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, that is unfortunate. Gas prices are down. Um, yeah. But again, I'm not sure if that has has to do with uh, this particular rate cut. But I, you just mentioned right. something, uh, so I'm going to move on to that, and that is that the, the reports that the Feds will cut interest rates again before year's end. So do you think there will be another interest cut, rate cut in the fourth quarter? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Fed has two more meetings this year. That's the FOMC, one in uh, November, one in December. And if they're supposed mm -hmm. to cut by 75 basis points more by the end of the year, one of those is going to be a 50 basis point cut. But again, uh, the actual impact of that will take some time uh, to be seen in the economy. Right, right now, it's mostly going to be a psychological effect, and it may push stock prices up a little more. Um, whether or not that's a good thing, uh, we'll have to wait and see <laughs> again. And when you when you yeah, when, when we're waiting to see if it's going to, you know, that effect, what are we talking about? Maybe we'll see it in, in the spring. When will we when will we see it? Yeah. So the standard lag time for interest rate cuts is between six and 18 months. So for these cuts that we just saw last week, could be something like January, February, or it could be as long as, you know, maybe uh, the early part of uh, 2026 or so. The, the lag times vary very much depending upon the structure of the economy, how much the Fed moves and all that. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a moving target. I wish I had a better answer. 
No, I, we all wish you had a better answer, but uh, we understand why you don't, uh, honestly. So listen, uh, you probably are very aware of this, that for the first time in 19 years, a central yes. bank governor disagreed mm -hmm. with the rate cut. We're talking about Federal Reserve Governor Michelle Bowman, and I want right. to read a, a part of her statement. It says, quote, we have not yet achieved our inflation goal. I believe that moving a measured at a measured pace toward a more neutral policy stance will ensure further progress in bringing inflation down to our 2% target. This approach would also avoid unnecessarily stoking demand. Okay, Peter, so did the feds get it right? And what does this latest rate cut say about the state of our economy and inflation? Well, the Fed is lowering rates right now because I think they they see unemployment rising rapidly. And one of their two mandates, in addition to keeping prices stable, is to try to support maximum employment. Uh, I would argue that the choice to lower rates right now, especially after the lousy CPI we saw last week, or not maybe not lousy, but not great, had a different purpose. And that is that the U.S., has spent over a trillion dollars this year just paying interest on 35 trillion in government debt at over five and a quarter percent. So by lowering rates, the Fed is, among other things, taking the cost or making the cost of taking on more government debt more affordable, which is not a good thing for citizens um, and not much better than inflation for citizens. So I think there's there are other reasons besides inflation and uh, and uh, maximum employment at work here. That's my personal view. And I agree with Michelle Bowman, the governor. OK. There is the uh, definite answer there. Peter, we're out of time for now, but I do appreciate uh, speaking with you, and we'll have you back again. Peter Earle, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.